look at some other features of erosion and deposition, specifically deltas. So deltas are river seg sediments which are deposited when a river enters a standing body of water such as a lake, a lagoon, sea, or ocean. This particular picture here is a picture of the Mississippi Delta coming from New Orleans. So you can see here in the picture we have New Orleans towards the top of the picture. And notice it's nice fan shaped. It's kind of a, a well, it's a weird looking shape. But uh, this is the uh, Mississippi Delta right here going into the Gulf of Mexico. So we have to have two things in order for a delta to form. They must include a river that's heavy in sediment and it also must include a standing body of water with little current. So the Mississippi Delta is actually very good for both of these. The Mississippi River is very heavy with sediment and it enters the Gulf of Mexico at this particular point where there is very little current. So there are some factors to de uh, delta formation which include a type of sediment, plant growth, local geology, human impact, and sea level changes. So remember a delta must include river heavy sediment and a st uh, which enters a standing body of water with little current but the type of delta formation or um, the, the different types of deltas actually will be determined by several factors such as geology and human impact and, this and the like. So when talking about deltas we actually see three types of deposited material. So imagine taking a look underwater at a cross section of the delta. We would see something kind of related to this. It might look a little bit different, but we see three types of deposited materials here. The first is a bottom set bed. And the bottom set bed is going to be the lower parts of a delta, composed of very fine sediment. And they're built outwards along the seafloor by turbidity currents. Turbidity currents are basically just currents that are um, that have lots of sediment in it as they move. So the bottom set beds are the very bottom. Then we have the second type of deposited material, which is called a foreset bed. Now look in the picture. The, the foreset bed rests upon the bottom set bed, and these are inclined layers of coarse sediment that are deposited above and in front of the previous one, moving by rolling and saltation. So as this coarse sediment is laid down and deposited, it kind of rolls forward and it keeps moving forward and keeps moving forward along the bottom set bed. Finally, we have the third type of deposited material in a delta, which is called a top set bed. Now, the top set bed are the top layers of a delta's floodplain, and these are composed of fine material, and they are built up by the work of several smaller channels split off of the main channel. So the top set bed is sort of like a continuation of the rivers, of those little tributaries that are around it. So if we take a, a picture back at the Mississippi Delta, we see that the main river body comes in the middle here. But if you notice, all the little workings down towards B, all these little workings here are your top set beds. These are your little tiny river segments that carry some of that sediment along and it's going to build up that stuff. So your um, three deposited materials starting with the bottom. We have a bottom set bed, the four set bed, and then a top set bed. Now there's three main types of deltas and this is dependent upon what is happening along the coastline and that will determine what type of delta is formed. So our three main deltas are arcuate deltas, cuspate deltas, and bird's foot deltas. Each are basically dominated by a specific type of uh, wave action or water movement along the coastline. So I have two pictures here which represent some of the rivers around the, er uh, the globe, which is the top one, and sort of what some of the they might look like in certain particular areas. So the first main type of delta is called an arcuate delta. And the arcuate delta in this picture right here is the lower left. Now these are fan-shaped deltas found in areas 
where longshore drift or waves keep edges smooth. So a longshore drift or a wave is basically some sort of current that kind of flows parallel to the coastline. However, it also can form not at very harsh angles or diagonals, but they sort of flow diagonally along the coastline. Now what happens are these longshore currents will erode some of this delta away and it's going to keep it very very smooth like you see in this picture. So these are wave dominated and they're pushing the sediment back onto the coastline basically so it's m removing some of that sediment keeping it nice and smooth. Now if you take a look at um, the picture up here you can sort of see those are what's in pink. Our second type of delta is a cuspate delta. Now this is a cusp shaped delta formed by regular but opposing gentle water movements and tides. So our cuspate delta is the very top right over here. And if you think of like a more of a rectangular shaped, this is tide dominated. So as the tides come in, the tides come out, they're going to erode some of those waters or some of the erosion I'm sorry, it's going to erode some of the coastline away back out and it'll bring some in and it'll uh, come back out. Now these tides um, cause some of the channels inland to become perpendicular to the coast. So as you can kind of see here all these little channels are perpendicular to the coastline. Our third and final main type of delta is called the bird's foot delta. Now this is where the delta brings an enormous amount of silt from the river and it's going to be deposited in the still body of water along the edge, um, edges because of the smaller distributaries for longer distance. Now a bird's foot delta is very river dominated. So in this particular area we don't see a lot of tide or wave um, action coming in from the particular body of water. So the river is actually free to um, empty itself out in longer distances. Notice that it's sort of shaped like a bird's foot. Not really, but it has a very funky look to it. Now if we take a look at the lower right hand picture, this is sort of a hybrid. We might never see exactly one that looks per perfectly like arcuate a bird's foot or a cuspate delta. We might see more of a hybrid, kind of like what you see in this lower right hand corner. So when looking at main types of deltas, while these are the three main types, we might find more of a hybrid version along, um, along other coastlines. 